What is up? Thank you for coming to my channel, Prison POV. Shout out to the joiners of the channel and shout out to the point of view crew. And now trip on this. Bro, like a month, maybe two months ago, three Aryan Brotherhood members murked a black dude at New Delano at Kern Valley State Prison, level four, 180. You ever heard about this? These three brand members took the wind, got this black dude, bro. And when I heard about that, I thought to myself, man, why was it swept under the rug? Why was there not a big riot following this incident? Why did the blacks just let it slide? Is what I was wondering. And as it turns out, my neighbor, she just so happens to be a correctional officer at where? New Delano, Kern Valley State Prison. So I saw him today and I got on his bumper, homeboy. I jammed him up. I said, dude, what's up with those three brand members getting that black dude? And then it just being squashed. How come there was no riot? Is there tension on the yard? What happened? And he gave me the whole rundown on it. And I just cannot wait to share with you guys. That's not going to be today's video. Oh, no. Today's video is going to involve Area Brotherhood, but it's going to involve homeboy. Did I disrespect them? Or hopefully not. Hopefully I did not, because I'm asking a question in this video. I'm going to give you the situation, and we're going to talk about a little tiny bit. Now, I might have even, hopefully not, unintentionally disrespected them in my last video I made. I don't know if you watched my last video or not, but then it was a little snippet. I talked about this dude, Jack, from Orange County. I was in H5 with him in Wasco Reception. And this fool, Jack, everyone was saying was a brand member. I guess they'd spotted a tattoo on him. I don't know. That was the word. Jack didn't introduce himself as one, but everyone was saying he was one, I guess, based on a tattoo he had. And so I said in my video, hey, man, maybe he had a clover. And then I was quickly corrected by the homeboy, Will, who's a straight up gangster, done time in Palm Hall, definitely know what time it is with the California prison politics. And he corrected me and said, no, Splinter, it's not a clover. It's called a shamrock, or it's referred to as a rock, but never a clover, which makes a lot of sense, because shamrock sounds like, er, shamrock, rock, and clover sounds like clover, like a, a flower or something. So I could see why they'd want to call it a shamrock and not a clover. You know, my mistake, my bad, it's not like I've met a lot of Aryan Brotherhood members in my life. On the contrary, actually, just only a few, a handful here and there, brother. And uh, yeah, so my bad. So this is kick the video off like this. Let's talk about my disrespect or hopefully the lack of it. And I'm going to start right here by saying there is this Nazi lowrider named Zombie from Bakersfield. Tattoo artist, big dude. Everyone knew him. And I had been trying to get some ink from him. And it just was not working. I would go to his pad. He wouldn't be there. You know, he said, show up. And he'd go over to this spot where I was at and just barely miss me. And we were just, we could not get on the same page to get this tattoo from him. And it was a very important tattoo. It was a cover-up. I wanted to cover up something on my back. I wanted to get this piece. But finally, I went by his pad. He was there. I showed up. I'm going to get the tattoo. And he's like, hey, bro, do me a favor before we do this ink. I need you to take homeboy to pick apart. The junkyard. He needs a, a, a part for his car. And I'm like, bro, I don't have time to do both that. I don't have time to do both take him to the junkyard and also sit here and get my back blasted dog. I come over to get this tattoo. Homie, I don't have a lot of time to work with. I definitely can't fit both that into my already packed, busy schedule. And he's like, dude, we're going to have to put the tattoo on pause right now because I got to get this done. I told homeboy I would take him. If you can't do me the solid favor, Splinter, and take this dude to the part, I mean, not to the to the junkyard, then to pick a part, I'm going to have to take him myself. But I appreciate it, Splinter, if you could take him for me. And I was like, fine, dude, I'll take him, bro. But I had a little bit of attitude. I was a little bit bummed out and a little bit grouchy over the whole scenario because I've been trying to get this tattoo done for a while, and now here I am taking this dude to the junkyard. All the way across town, I meet mean, zombies in Oildale. The junkyard is way over on South Union. You know, it's it's a dusty and dirty. It's hot outside. I got brand new shoes on. So I say, fine. I tell this this friend of his, this, he's an older dude too. I can tell he's a convict. He's got some tattoos on him, homeboy. Jump in the ride, let's go. So we go to the pick-apart. 
we go to the junkyard and dude is walking around he's got like a a flat head and a phillips screwdriver he has one of them little tiny small crescent wrenches and like some wire clippers i mean that's really about all he has for tools and then when we get there i notice he's not just looking at hondas i mean i'm thinking if he had a honda and he's looking for a carburetor he would go like pop the hood on every honda he saw but no he was looking at hondas toyotas vw's and i'm thinking what's up with this dude what kind of part is he actually looking for it looked to me as if he was just looking at everything like if he just wanted to sit just have fun with every single car out there and he wasn't just looking under the hood he was looking under the hood on some cars he's looking at the interior on others under this seat in this trunk underneath this one bro he's all up and down and inside all these cars climbing all over them meanwhile my shoes are getting dusty and i'm not having fun i'm getting sunburned but finally, I tell him, dude, we got to split, bro. I don't have time for this. This is not with Zombie. He didn't tell me this is what was going to happen. He said, just run here real quick. I thought we we're going to get a part. You're not even really looking for a part. I kind of I kind of went off on him a little bit. I kind of gave him a little bit of a tongue lashing. I mean, I got some stuff off my chest. I wasn't disrespectful in my speech, but I was letting him know I wasn't happy. Bringing you here just to walk around aimlessly. It's not my get down. It's not what I really want to do, especially not right now. I told dude, man, we just got to go. We got to go. Just get in my car. Let's just split. And so when we were leaving, I did happen to notice something on him, though. That kind of made me think, what? He had a bluebird tattoo. A bluebird tattoo. Now, way back in the day, before the Aryan Brotherhood, there was a gang called the Bluebirds. The Woods had a gang called Bluebird. They'd always get this little bluebird tattooed on them. And when Aryan Brotherhood started... They said, AB said, that anyone who is a bluebird automatically gets into the AB. But it doesn't mean that very many of them did, just because they had that invitation up to them. I mean, I met all kinds of older gentlemen doing time that had the bluebird tattoo that were not brand members. So just because they had that open door doesn't mean they walked through it. But I know there is a lot of brand members who were at one time bluebirds. And I noticed this dude had a bluebird tattoo. So I'm thinking, eh, I'm thinking, well, it doesn't really mean nothing. Except for he's an older gentleman, done a grip of time, yada, yada. Dude, so I take him, drop him back off, back off a zombie's pad. Tell a zombie pretty much, later, homeboy, I'll be in touch. And I split. Later, zombie starts, he's blowing my phone up, actually. Blowing me up. I'm not answering. I think he's going to say, like, hey, man, I don't know what he's going to say, but I just ain't trying to hear it. And finally, I answer, what's up, zombie? He's like, dude, that, that dude told me not, I can't tattoo on you, man. You have to find someone else to do your back. Dude told me I can't sling no ink on you. You were rude to him. I say, what? I mean, what? Oh, fuck him, dog. What do you mean he told you you can't sling ink on me? Like, because of rip what that dude said, man. What are you talking about, bro? He's like, you don't, he's, he's like, he's a brand member. If you told me I can't tattoo on you, I'm not going to tattoo on you. I was just like, what? Dude, I saw my life flash in front of my eyes. I was like, dude, he's a brand member? I was like, who is he? You just told me his name was Joe. Dude, he has a nickname that goes along with Joe. I don't want to throw it out there who he was. I just thought it was some older dude named Joe. He's like, no, it's Joe. And I've heard the name, and I was like, oh, damn, that's who that was? I was like, what do you tell me? I was like, bro, I was like borderline rude to him. He goes, yeah, I know. He's not happy about it. He he, he, he feels disrespected. And I was like, damn, dude. I was like, I, I got to get a hold of him. I said, give me his phone number. I'm going to call him and kiss his ass. I mean, apologize. And he goes, I, I'm not going to give you his number. I'll, I'll tell you where he lives. And I'm like, dude, that's weird. Usually it's the opposite. Usually it's like, I can't tell you where he lives, but I'll tell you his phone number. But no, you're telling me I can't call him. Just go over there. I'm thinking, because do you want to see me in person? So he, I don't want to go over there. I'd rather call. Can you go over there for me? Can I write him a letter? Hey, I apologize, brother. My bad. Shit. Dude, I said, all right. So anyway, I went to his pad, knocked on the door, took like four or five people in my car as witnesses, or to drive my car off if I never came back out the house. But dude, I went into his pad and just said, hey, man, I apologize. He said, yeah, you were rude to me, dude. I didn't appreciate that at all, man. You're supposed to, I thought you were doing me a favor. You know, you, I said, dude, I apologize, man. Full blast. I said, do you want to go to the junkyard right now? We will go right now, and I will take out whatever part out of any car you want. I'll, I'll, I'll even buy it. I'll buy the part. How about that? No, no, screw the junkyard. You want to go to Craig and I'll buy it brand new. What do you need? Let, let's take your shop and do a mechanic, and I will pay for it that way. Let's get your car fixed, brother. Hey, I apologize, dude. I said I was just grouchy because my, my new shoe, shoes were getting, I was stuttering, my shoes, 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 my shoes were getting dirty in the dust. I was getting hot from the sun. 
Uh, no disrespect to me, but you were like a little aimless. I couldn't get on board because I didn't know what your plan was. If you'd said I'm looking for a carp carburetor out of a Ford, I could have been more on board. Ginger, you give me a carburetor out of a Ford. I could be on board. Dude, I didn't know what you were doing. He's like, all right, I accept your apology. And just be careful how you treat people in the future. You never know who you're dealing with. And I said, amen to that, man. And, and thank you for, for accepting my apology. And dude, anytime you need a ride anywhere, like don't hesitate, hit me up. So then I left, we shook hands and hugged and everything was gravy. And I didn't really give it a second thought until like a month later, man, a month later, I'm at my old lady's dad's house. I have a girlfriend. She lives with her dad. Actually, it's not with her dad. It's a house her dad took over from some chick. He was working, hustling some chick, took her pad dog, snarf, snarf. He was over there at this house. I would often stay with my old lady. And he called the pad and he said, hey, this dude's going to be coming by with a stolen car. Let him put it in the garage. I told him he could hide it there because his house is hot. Now, dude, I hate that, bro. Let me tell you right now, I can't stand that. When people want to bring their felonies over. I've had people call me and say, hey, Splinter, can I bring over my, my meth lab and hide it at your house? Because, you know, my house is hot. Cops got are watching. I'd like to bring all my felonies and all my stolen items to your, your house and all my, my quit days and all my... No, dude, you can't bring none of that beeswax over my pad. Dude, my house is hot. I'm not scaring on parole. Cops are watching me. What do you mean? So then when her dad called and said this dude's bringing a stolen truck over, let him park in the garage. But let me pause it right there. Because you know what is kind of up the same alley and it's something I'm dealing with right now that pisses me off? People will say, let me bring my felonies over. Let me bring my guns. Let me bring my stolen car. Hide it at your house. My house is hot. Also, what people would do, if you have a lot of animals, like Sue and I do, we have several dogs and several cats. We're in the rescuing business. We will try to rescue animals off the street, find them homes. When you have animals, people think it's cool just to find spare animals, stray animals on the street and bring them by. Because here I found this like stray dog on the streets here you can have it. And it's like, you do not drive around town picking up stray dogs just so you can drop them off of my pad. I mean, what, 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 what kind of madness is that? I don't even do that. I don't even pick up every stray animal I see on the street and bring it home. I mean, not long ago, someone found uh, kittens. There's like five kittens. Three of them had passed away, and the two of them were barely alive. The, that person snatched up both those cats and brought them here to our house. Here, here's two kittens, barely alive. I found them. It's like, well, thanks. What are we supposed to do with them? And just last week, our neighbor, it was on July 5th, as a matter of fact, because July 5th, they're going to find a lot of strays because the dogs run away from home. On 4th of July, when they hear the loud fireworks, they get scared, they run off. And on July 5th, they're going to find a lot of strays. Our neighbor found a stray dog and brought it over. Here you go. Found the stray dog. Th thought you'd like to have it. Care for it. So, dude, don't be dropping animals off of people's houses. And don't be bringing them your felonies. So, her dad called and said, this dude's coming over the stolen truck. I said, fine. I went out front. I waited for him. Because when that stolen truck came pulling up, I was going to say, dude, take that truck and get it the fizzuck out of here. How dare you try to bring your felonies over here talking about, oh, I'm hot. We're hot. Mike has two strikes. I'm up scouting on parole. Dude, the sheriffs are just poking their nose around here yesterday. Get your bullshit out of here, bro. I was preparing to tell him. The truck came pulling up. I walked all aggressively over to the driver's side window. Dude rolled the window down. It was that friend member Joe. He's like, oh, hey, what's up, young sir? I walked immediately over to the garage, opened it, was like, come on, bring it on forward. Bring it in, homie. Bring it in. Cool truck. I was like, would you like me to wash it? I'll wash it for you. He's like, no, don't wash it. Keep your fingerprints off and it's stolen. Well, hey, cool. Thanks for the heads up. But yeah, no problem. We'll keep your stolen truck. Any stolen items you have, drop them off, bro. I'll take them. Matter of fact, cops come. I'll say they're mine. How do you feel about that? So that's what happened with dude. And he was hanging out with this other pad, bro. That's another story for later. In fact, I told the story I almost told just now, but we're going to say it for later in a video titled Bakersfield Brand Members I made like a year ago where I talked about three or four different brand members from Bakersfield and some stories. But dude, the views were horrible. And I'm like, man, I deleted it. I'm like, bro, I'm not going to make a video like this where I'm throwing myself out there. I could possibly even get in trouble for some poor ass views. Charlie Holmes, be that as it may, if I disrespected him, uh, I apologize. And we're cool now. But trip on this. Trip up on this one, homeboy. I am in prison. Of course, right? Of course I am. 
and there's a brand member there. I don't know if everybody knows this dude's a brand member, but I know. I know he's from Bakersfield. And I knew and I heard about this dude before I even seen him in prison. I knew all about him. I knew what kind of dude he was. I knew he was a straight up killer and he was an Aryan Brotherhood member. But yet he's on a soft level three because he wasn't validated. He wasn't up in Pelican Bay. He wasn't at the Corcoran Shoe or Tehachapi like most of the other brand members. He somehow slipped through the cracks. Although he was bona fide brother, blood in, blood out, a straight up brother, an AB official brand member, he was on a soft level three. And how I knew he was with the business dog, one way you could tell for sure this dude had everyone's respect is because they were giving him all the drugs. That's how you can really tell. You go to a prison yard and you see white boys hit drugs on the weekends and you see them start giving them, them away. Who they're giving them away to, that's the dude with the juice. That's the gangster right there, homeboy. They're not just going to give their drugs away to just anybody. But dude, this guy who I'm talking about, this brand member, had everything coming. It was real quiet. He walked the yard. Bro, he played handball. I seen people play handball against him and throw the game. Purposely lose. I mean, Reckless, bro. He was he could sling that handball, small ball and everything. Undefeated. No one could beat Reckless. But when he would step up and play this dude, he would lose every time. I'm like, you're throwing it. You're letting homie win, bro. It's Everyone can tell. Nah, nah, nah. Bad day. Having a bad day. Anyways, this dude's straight up brand member. And now I had heard long ago that he had murked his celly. That he whacked his celly. That's one of the main things I always heard about this dude. He's a killer. He's crazy. He got his celly back in the day. So I'm getting ready to get out. When you're getting ready to get out of prison, everyone will have all these chores they want for you to do. Hey, bro, when you get out, can you go do this? Can you go talk to this person? Can you mail this for me? Can you do this? Can you get this set up? People have things they want you to do once you get out. So I'm walking a lap with this fool. He has some things that he wanted me to do for him when I got out. So we're walking laps and he's saying, do this and do that. And I'm saying, yeah, cool. No problem. Then all of a sudden I freaking shoot from the hip dog. And I'm like, Hey, I heard that you killed your cell way back in the day. I go, what happened with that? dude? can you, can you tell me the story about that? He looked at me, his eyes this big, and then they went like, like first his eyes swole up like huge, like saucer pans, and then they got real small like a cat. Like, <sighs> Bro, he looked crazy, dog. He gave me the craziest look. I wanted to cut my tongue out and hand it to him and say, I'll never use this again. I knew instantly I messed up. Bro, I was just new to doing prison time, and I was just curious, and I literally thought this dude would walk a lap and tell me about a fucking murder he committed. I really thought that. He was telling me all the details. I thought he might even be proud. But, bro, he wanted nothing to do with that question. He even had someone come tell me later that one of the things he wanted me to do for him, never mind, don't do it. He sent me on a mission, bro. Before I asked him about that hit he did, he had sent me on a mission. Then I asked that question. He walked away. He sent someone over to me. Hey, Splinter, dude said never mind on that. What he wanted you to do, just forget it. Nice meeting you. Mucho gusto. Everything's cool. So, dude, he got really pissed off. And the, and the trippy thing about that is I know a Southsider who's done a lot of prison time. And I asked him about that. Or I told him about that. I said, dude, I was on the yard with a brand member once. And I asked him about him murking a dude at Sally back in the day. And the Southsider said, damn, dude, what happened to you after you asked him? I said, nothing. He just put me on the shine. Quit talking to me and no longer wanted me to go do a favor for him. He said, dude, if I, being a Southsider... Would have asked a Mexican mafia member that, hey, tell me about the time you murked your celly back in the day. He, they would have hit me. They would have took my breath. They would have took me out. That sounds like a weird question. Like, why do you even want to know? What are you going to do with the information once you have it? Uh, as, as for me, it's a strictly entertainment. What am I going to do with the information? Nothing. Enjoy it. Maybe laugh. In my head, just be like, wow, crazy. I mean, it's cool to hear crazy stories like that, especially from the horse's mouth. I mean, I don't know what I'm going to do with the information. I mean, not save it up and give it to the police later. Hey, shh, inmate task force here. You just told me what happened. Dude, never that. I wasn't even, I mean, come on now, never that. But this South Center told me, dude, had I asked an inmate member about a whacking he did back in the day, dude, I would have never left the yard. They probably would have hit me that same, very same day. Dude, trip on that, trip on that. And we know about how dangerous disrespect can be. Because I said before, bro, about how Bullet and Evil, two NLR members, were in Wasco Reception, D6, the hole. And they were coming down 
they're coming out of their sales for yard, of course, all shackled up under escort, and they walk by a brand member named Turtle, who's in a phone booth, with like a one-man cage, where they hold inmates, usually during yard, transport, blah, blah, blah. Bro, he's in a phone booth, this brand member Turtle. Evil and Bullet walk past him, and Turtle sees him and says, hey, what's up, fellas? And Evil says to him, NLR, that's what's up. Banged on him. This brand member said, hey, what's up? And he said, NLR, that's what's up. Pretty much just gang banged on him. By the time they got out to the yard, Bullet and Evil, Turtle had already told the fellas, Mark Evil for elimination. So when they get out to the yard, the homeboys walk right after Bullet, and they say, we don't know what Evil just did. We don't know what he said to Turtle exactly, but he pissed him off, handed him a razor blade, and said, now handle it. Dude, that's how serious disrespect can be. Dude, Evil was already marked for elimination for lying. Because when Bullet and Evil were cellies in D6, the whole Wasco reception, and they're kicking it in this bullshit, and like you often do with your celly, Evil came out the pocket. He said, yeah, when I was at Cork and Shoe, I had the top bunk. I was there with my celly at the Cork and Shoe, Evil said, and I was on the top bunk. But at Cork and Shoe, there is not a bunk bed situation. It's two lower bunks. They're, they're slabs of stone, one in each corner. So no, Evil, you did not have the top bunk at Corcoran State Prison. You were obviously had never been there because it's not a bunk bed. It's two lower bunks. So Bullet caught him that lie, and he already requested from leadership, let me whack this fool. Let me take this fool out. I caught him in a lie. If he's going to lie about that, he's not trustworthy at all. And the thing about Evil, just straight up Hispanic. His name was Manuel. Straight up Hispanic. A lot of people don't believe me when I tell them there's Hispanic woods out there. And a lot of them, especially a lot of Hispanic in alarms. And that's one of the things that got them in trouble later on too. The AB asked them to clean it up. The AB told them, no, we don't want any non-white lowriders. And bro, probably 50% of them are non-white. How are you going to clean that up? So I say all that to say this. None but the ultimate and utmost love and respect for the Point of View crew and for my joiners. I love you guys full blast. See you on the next one. I'm going to cut the string, let it fly. Peace.